Satan cured my cancer. Now I wish I was dead. Part 3 by Richard Saxon Satan had requested something of me, and as always I answered his call. The sun had already set during the time searching for the prison, and now the moon perfectly lit up my path. All things considered, it was a beautiful night. I put the GPS on my dashboard and followed the directions. A trip took no longer than half an hour before I arrived at the lake. The same familiar figure I had come to know throughout the past decade greeted me. Satan. Ah, oh, there's my golden boy, Satan said as soon as I exited the vehicle. Congratulations on a job well done. You ready to get your happiness back? This better not be a trick, I said. He seemed legitimately offended. A trick? Have I ever lied to you, old friend? I thought about that statement for a while, and in all honesty, he had been a creature of his word. Although his word meant reading between the lines. I suppose you haven't. Exactly, now show some respect. I saved your life on more than one occasion. He started walking towards the lake, gesturing me to follow. As we got closer, I could see something swimming calmly around in the dark water. However it was, he or she seemed to have Satan's attention. You see that over there? Satan said as he pointed at the swimming figure, too far away to notice us spying. Someone enjoying a late night swim? I asked. He looked at me and smiled. Uh, for now, a sinister suggestion. That man over there is called Daniel Henderson. He is what we call a godless person. Godless? Yes, a man who might not have abandoned God, my father, but one who has been abandoned by God himself. What? And why would he do that? Satan took a deep breath, looking more serious than I had ever seen him before. Almost a hint of sadness appearing in his eyes. Humans were created by my father and were given freedom to roam around Earth, doing as they please. He, well, we, never predicted all the horrible things you guys would do. Quite frankly, his words hardly moved me. So Daniel over there is quite awful, I assume. If by awful you mean raging alcoholic who almost killed his wife with violent outbursts on more than one occasion, causing the miscarriage of their unborn son, then yes. I paused, starting to get an idea as to why he had called me over to this lake. He needs to be dealt with, he said. Are you saying you want me to kill him? Jesus Christ, no, that would be insane. Oh, besides, I already took care of that. As he uttered those words, I could see the signs of a man struggling to stay above the surface of the water. My first instinct was to dive into it, trying to save him. Despite what this man was, I had to do something, but Satan grabbed my arm. Don't do that. It will get you too. The man was screaming in agony as he was being pulled under the surface, only coming up for a few times to gasp for air. What's happening to him? Just one of my little creatures lurking in the water. Earlier tonight, I met up with our not-so-good-damn-Daniel here, and I offered him a few drinks. Didn't take long to get him drunk, then I drove him over here and convinced him to go for a nice swim. He's godless, so he's not protected by my father's laws anymore. The man's yells of pure agony were slowly being replaced by gurgles, and after a mere minute of struggle, he was pulled under for the last time. A few last bubbles resurfaced, the only sign he would ever leave behind. The gruesome sounds barely fazed me. It was a strange feeling knowing that a future murderer was being killed. I became vaguely disturbed, but also wondered what would I feel if I actually had the ability to experience joy. Would I be glad he was dying? What do I call you anyway? I asked. What? You have so many names, Satan, the Devil, Lucifer, and the also annoying way you sign your notes as a Luke. I mean, make up your mind. Does a rose by any other name smell just as sweet, he said cheerfully. What the hell are you talking about? Jeez, you're fuzzy without your happiness. Call me whatever you want. A name has no power despite what those dumbass witches say. I sighed. Fine, but why am I here? 
Oh, the guy who just drowned, he wanted unlimited wealth, so I gave him a coin made of gold that replicated whenever he needed it. But he swallowed it when I wanted it back. He broke the deal and refused to pay the price. And where is the coin now? As I said, he swallowed it. You gotta swim out there and dive down for it. Are you insane? But don't worry, my creature won't harm you unless I want it to. Aside, risking mutilation or death was worth it if I could be happy again. Also take this, he handed me a pair of swimming goggles. Without saying anything, I started walking into the water. It was freezing, I couldn't believe that man could have swam there. Despite being exceptionally inebriated by whatever Satan had given him to drink, the man had drowned in the center of the lake. I put the goggles on and was about halfway. Everything changed as I put them on. The water felt warmer. The dark water turned inviting, and I could see everything I needed to, even in the dark. It even increased my swimming speed. It didn't take long until I reached my destination. Below me there was a bunch of disconnected bones and a few rags here and there. All the flesh had long since been consumed by whatever creature Satan had put in these waters. In the distance I heard him yelling something, but with water in my ears I could hardly make out any sounds. I dove under, a brief moment of fearlessness. The water's surface had slightly distorted my perception of the depth alongside the goggles. I could see the remains of a man, but they seemed endlessly far down. Around the skeleton I could see the creature that had ruthlessly murdered him. It seemed more of a conglomeration of individual creatures living in symbiosis rather than anything else. I could see hundreds of tendrils withering around each other, razor-sharp teeth protruding from each appendage. They were gliding over the bones in search for specks of meat. Due to some panicked reaction, I gasped for air. Despite being underwater, I found that I could breathe as long as I had the goggles on. I swam down while pondering how in the ever-living fuck I had ended up working for Satan in the first place, and how I would get out of it. The coin had fallen through the ribs and lay softly at the bottom of the lake. As I reached for it, a few tendrils wrapped around my arm. In a reflex, I pulled my arm back, which seemed to frighten the monster of the lake. It reached out a single tendril this time, and gently touched me, sensing my purpose in its layer. I quickly grabbed the coin before shooting up from the bottom, a few new gold coins spawned from the original falling peacefully to the bottom. I rocketed to the surface within seconds. As I swam towards the shore, I noticed that Satan was no longer standing there, and as I arrived, all I saw was a small brown paper bag. As soon as I exited the water, the goggles disappeared, and I once again realized how cold I was, soaking wet with water and a few bits of meat from Daniel Henderson stuck on me. On the note he had written, Here's your happiness. Take one a day and you'll feel like your old self before you know it. Mine is the cancer, of course. I'll collect the coin later. Inside the bag, I found a box of black pills, no larger than common Tylenol. But with its repulsive colors and smell, I doubted their effectiveness. After some hesitation, I swallowed a pill. It tasted like an odd combination of liquor ice and pickle juice. I felt a weird sensation as soon as it had gone down my esophagus, but I couldn't describe it. I flipped the paper and it said, Pack your bags, time for a long trip to Walmart. Kiss hug, kiss hug. <sighs> I really hope I get time to change my wet clothes. <laughs>